Hello students, a very very good evening to all of you. Welcome to my channel. This is a very important class on literary criticism and today we will talk about S.T. Coleridge as a critic. But before starting, I want to give you a brief introduction about myself. My name is Prishti Mukherjee. I have qualified NTA UGC NET exam in English literature four times and have also qualified West Bengal SET examination. I have three years of teaching experience. Moreover, I have also taught in NVGL online course from IIT Madras theater. So that is all about myself. This is the link of my Telegram channel. The link is also given in the description box. So those of you who have not joined yet, please join to get notification of all important classes. And also please don't forget to like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel so that many more new learners can join. Good evening Raj Kishore. Yes, I am fine. Uh, how are you? And uh, what about your exam? West Bengal said. Good evening Ektaba. Welcome. Uh, These are the timings of your classes, Monday to Friday at 8.30 p.m., Saturday, Sunday off. So, don't forget to join me live. Please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notification. Okay, so um, we have already discussed about uh, Wordsworth as a critic, preface to lyrical ballads. And in today's class, we will talk about William uh, sorry, uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge as a critic and Biographia Literaria as a critical text. Okay, so shall we start? Karte. First of all, uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, this is his image, 1771 to 1834 is his timeline. So Samuel Taylor Coleridge was born on 21st October 1772 in Ottery, Great Britain. His father was a vicar and a headmaster of King's School. He studied at Christ's Hospital, a charity school, and he was greatly inspired by the works of Virgil and Daniel Defoe. He was a very close friend of Charles Lamb. These are all about biographical details. Later studied at Jesus College, Cambridge. This is important. Uh, he wrote The Fall of Robespierre. It is a drama, and it was written in collaboration with Robert Sadi. Robert Sadi. And this is also important. Coleridge and uh, Robert Sadi also developed an utopian community, an imaginary uh, community, which is known as Pantisocracy. And it also developed a kind of particular philosophy of uh, utopian philosophy that is also known as Pantisocracy philosophy. Good evening, Elena. Welcome. He contributed four poems in lyrical ballads and he was addicted to opium due to his anxiety proneness. So, these are about his biographical details. We will directly move on to his critical work that is Biographia Literaria. He published his first poem in the Morning Chronicle. He edited two magazines. So, ye sari minor information hai isko zaroor yaad rakhna. Two magazines, The Friend and The Watchman. This lime tree bower my prison. This is a poem written by Coleridge dedicated to or addressed to Charles Lamb. Okay. Uh, no problem, Elena. We have just started discussing the biography of Coleridge. So, we will directly come on to today's topic that is Biographia Literaria published in 1870. So, Biographia Literaria uh, and Preface to Lyrical Ballads both are considered the most important critical works during Romantic Age and uh, not only during Romantic Age but also critical work related to the idea of poetry, how an ideal poet should be. Just poetics ko hum uh, discuss karte hai in the field of drama. Uh, tragedy ke liye wo famous hai. Vaise hi Biographia Literaria is also famous for uh, poetry and the rules of poetry. So, alternative title hai biographical sources of my literary life and opinion. It is not exactly alternative title. It is actually the English translation of the main title Biographia Literaria. So, biographical sources of my literary life and opinions. This is the alternative title. It has total 23 chapters divided into two volumes. Okay, it was originally intended as a preface 
to a collected volume of Coleridge's poems explaining and justifying his own style and practice in poetry. So you all know the fact that William Wordsworth uh, is known as nature poet and Coleridge is basically known for his supernatural uh, poems. So Jesse Wordsworth ne ye socha tha ki I must explain this new kind of poetry which has come after Augustan age or after 18th century in a particular preface detailing all the features so that the readers or the audience can accept it. Similarly, usi idea se Coleridge ne bhi ye socha tha ki mujhe bhi ek preface likhna hai because my poems are also different from Wordsworth's and it is based on something which is not actually existed. Supernatural world or imaginary world. So, iske piche bhi ek explanation ki zaruri hai. So, actually uh, Coleridge plans to publish it as a preface to the collected volume of his poems. But later it was published separately as a critical work. Basically, it is a combination of autobiography, philosophy and literary criticism. Analysis of philosophical principles from Kant to Schelling and also of Wordsworth. And this is important. It was inspired by David Hartley's associationism, which is described by him as a pressure cooker. So, this is analogy. So, David Hartley's concept is associationism. Associationism means something which are associated or related to each other. And this idea uh, helps Coleridge to develop the idea of organic wholeness of a poem. We will talk about that. So, this idea was compared to as a pressure cooker. As a pressure cooker, we add all the ingredients ko dal dete and finally, we close it and mix it up and mix it up and mix it up and mix it up. So, associationism is doing the same purpose. Okay. So, next time we come to biography and literary, what are the main points? First important point that Coleridge has told is qualities of a genius poet. Very important, qualities of a genius poet. Okay? So, here is a thing, Coleridge has made a very good distinction between genius and talent. So, we often consider these two words synonymous. But according to Coleridge, it is not synonymous in the case of poetry. <coughs> Genius person and talented person, dono ka meaning alag. He believed in the self-sufficing power of absolute genius. And genius ka ye definition hai ki genius is inborn. But poetic talent can be acquired. So those people who are talented person, they have acquired their uh, mastery on that particular field. But a genius is someone who is inborn. That particular talent or uh, that particular ability inside him or her is inborn. Okay. So genius poet hume banna hai na ki talented poet. The power of imagination infuses life into the object thus making it more creative and extremely great. So genius poet kya karte hai? They have an extreme level of imagination uh, or imaginative power. So they can write very ordinary things in an extraordinary way, in a greatly creative manner. That is why they are genius. But the talented poets uh, cannot do that much of excellence because their, uh, their abilities are acquired or learned or earned through training. Okay. So, this basic difference between genius and talent. In that context, Coleridge praises Venus and Adonis' rape of Lucris as outputs of a perfect genius. Shakespeare. Shakespeare ka ye poems ke baare mein bhi hum jaate hai. Venus and Adonis' rape of Lucris. These are outputs of a perfect genius. Genuine poet must have a sense of music which is a gift of imagination. Okay. Through his sense, he can unify the artistic elements in a poem. That is actually the organic wholeness. So, genius poet ke andar ye ability hona hai ki wo different elements ko ek saath jud kar. The idea of associationism given by David Hartley. He can unify all those artistic elements into an organic whole. 
so that the whole creation or the whole piece of poetry will achieve a significant effect. Genius poets must choose subjects remote from the personal interest and circumstance. This is another important point that you should not always talk about your own interest, your own sufferings and problems, but you must choose something which are universal in nature. So, Coleridge ka ye manna hai ki aap apne problems, apne sufferings ko bata rahe ho. This is not always accepted. You need to tell about everyone's suffering. Everyone's sufferings or problems. Or you can say your personal opinion in such a way that it can also appear to be universal. So, genius poets ye kaam karte hai. Yes, absolutely right, Ekdaba. Genius poets ye kaam karte hai ki wo एक ऐसे सब्जेक्ट को चूज करते हैं विच इज नॉट फ्रॉम देयर इनहेरेंट पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस बट इट इज यूनिवर्सल इट इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर ऑल जीनियस पोइट नॉट ओनली कॉपीज द इमेजेस फ्रॉम नेचर रादर मॉडिफाइज इट बाई अ प्री डोमिनेंट पैशन वही सेकेंडरी इमेजिनेशन का आइडिया The credit lies in that when the poet is able to transfer to them from his own spirit. To a human and intellectual life. So natural imagery is to bahut kuch hai. We also know what kind of natural imagery is or natural objects are there in our nature. Hum sabhi wo objects ko dekhte hai. But genius poets not only describes the natural settings as it is. Rather they can modify it with their own sensibilities or rhetorical speeches, passion. So saari cheeze wo natural object ke andar hoga taki एक नॉन लिविंग ऑब्जेक्ट लिविंग बन जाए दैट इज द क्रेडिट ऑफ अ पोएट व्हेन द पोएट इज एबल टू ट्रांसफर टू देम फ्रॉम हिज ओन स्पिरिट उसके अपने अंदर जो एबिलिटी है जो टैलेंट है उसको वो ट्रांसफर कर सकते हैं टू दैट नेचुरल ऑब्जेक्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ पैथेटिक फैलेसी और एनी काइंड ऑफ फिगर्स ऑफ स्पीच इन दैट केस ही विल बी अ जीनियस पोएट Not only copying something, but presenting it in a modified and new manner. And Coleridge is saying, poetry is the finest flower of human knowledge, passion, and emotion. So genius poets must have depth of thought and feelings. So, जो Wordsworth ने जो definition दिया था, poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. He has also given emphasis on emotion or feeling. Coleridge is also doing the same thing. But Coleridge is saying that it is not only about emotion, rather it is also about your knowledge and passion. ये दोनों चीज़ें वो एक तो ये था qualities of a genius poet. Now we will move on to the second topic that is organic wholeness of a poet. मैंने अभी इस term आपको बताया organic wholeness of a poet. This is very important. So in chapter 14, Coleridge talks about this concept by inspired by the Germanic idea of organic unity. So Coleridge is saying that poetry or the process of writing poetry, it is an activity of the poet's mind. And when the poem is produced, it is just one of the forms of expression. Remember the poem Thought Fox by Ted Hume? where uh, Ted Hugh has elaborately discussed how a poet is writing a poetry or composing something. So, total process unhone bataya ki kaise thought uske dimaag mein aate hai, then wo kaise express karte hai through writing, the page is printed finally. So, Coleridge is saying that it is, it is a complete process like Ted Hugh. Uh, Coleridge is also saying that it is a complete process. It is an activity inside poet's mind. It is a very um, active and uh, very important activity uh, endlessly going uh, inside the poet's mind and finally when the poet is writing or composing the poem then it will be an expression of his or her own sensibility. Now he says that a legitimate poem is one in which the parts mutually support and explain each other and harmonize with metrical arrangements. That is known as legitimate poem. So, these are all key words. This term is very important. Those who have given West Bengal set exam, you have seen that this time there were very informative questions. I was watching the question paper. 
तो इन्फॉर्मेटिव क्वेश्चन ज्यादा आए हैं टाइटल सब टाइटल मैचिंग ठीक है कॉम्प्रिहेंशन टाइप क्वेश्चन कम है बट इन्फॉर्मेटिव क्वेश्चन बहुत ज्यादा ये बुक किसने लिखा था ये टर्म एक टर्म से मैंने देखा कि थियोरी से क्वेश्चन आया था कि एफेक्टिव uh, फैलसी कौन सी थियोरी का टर्म है फोकलाइजेशन uh, कौन सी थियोरी का टर्म है तो दिस टर्म्स आर इम्पोर्टेंट व्हेन यू रीड लिटरेरी थियोरी एंड क्रिटिसिज्म तो ये पूछे जा सकते हैं कि लेजिटिमेट पोएम ये टर्म हमको कौन सी जगह में मिलती है तो इट इज अबाउट फुल रिज लेजिटिमेट पोएम इज अ टर्म पॉइंट बाई फुल तो लेजिटिमेट पोएम इज वन इन विच द पार्ट म्यूचुअली सपोर्ट एंड एक्सप्लेन इच अदर तो पोएट्री हैज अ नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स दिस इज ट्रू उसमें तो लैंग्वेज एक इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट है एंड ऑब्वियसली मेट्रिकल पैटर्न वो भी एक इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट है तो एवरीथिंग मस्ट बी हार्मोनाइज विच मीन्स दैट द कॉन्टेक्सट ऑफ द पोएम द समरी ऑफ सॉरी नॉट द समरी द थीम ऑफ द पोएम थीम कॉन्टेक्सट इन लैंग्वेज इन सभी चीजों के साथ आपको मेट्रिकल पैटर्न भी मैच करवाना है You cannot write an elegy with a very rhythmical way, like twinkle, twinkle, little star. This, this is not the rhythm of an elegy, right? So, if you write this, then your whole organic wholeness will not be there. Coleridge is talking about that each and every element inside a poetry, from language or rhythm or structure or thought or emotion 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 सब्जेक्ट मैटर टाइटल सब टाइटल ये सारे के सारे जो एलिमेंट्स है वो टोटली मैच होना चाहिए उस पोएट्री के साथ अदरवाइज इट विल लैक यूनिटी तो जीनियस पोएट और आइडियल पोएट और लेजिटिमेट पोएम इज दैट काइंड ऑफ अ पोएम व्हिच हैज दिस ऑर्गेनिक फुलनेस ठीक है अच्छा तो दिस इज अबाउट ऑर्गेनिक फुलनेस ऑफ अ पोएम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कांसेप्ट डिलीवर्ड इन चैप्टर 14 नेक्स्ट uh, में आते हैं ओके तो ऑर्गेनिक होलनेस के बाद वी विल टॉक तो ऑर्गेनिक होलनेस में उन्होंने ये कोटेशन यूज किया था नथिंग कैन परमानेंटली प्लीज विच डज नॉट कंटेन विच डज नॉट कंटेन इन इट सेल्फ द रीजन व्हाई इट इज सो एंड नॉट अदरवाइज इफ मीटर बी सुपरसीडेड ऑल अदर पार्ट्स मस्ट बी मेड कंसोनेंट विद इट सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कोलरिज इज सेइंग दैट नथिंग कैन परमानेंटली प्लीज ये एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट स्टेटमेंट है बायोग्राफी लिटरेरिया का कि जिसके पास रीजन ना हो अगर आपके पास रीजन नहीं हो तो यू कैनॉट परमानेंटली प्लीज समथिंग ओनली थ्रू इमोशन ओनली थ्रू अंडरस्टैंडिंग यू कैनॉट डू सच थिंग्स ठीक है तो आपको अगर परमानेंटली कोई चीज को परमानेंटली एस्टेब्लिश uh, करने हैं इन साइड द माइंड ऑफ द रीडर देन यू मस्ट हैव द रीजन ठीक है वाई इट वाई इट इज नॉट सो वाई इट इज सो एंड नॉट अदरवाइज यू मस्ट जज दैट पर्टिकुलर थीम ऑफ द पोएम दैट वाई इज द पोएट राइटिंग अबाउट दिस थीम एंड नॉट द एन अदर थीम इफ मीटर बी सुपरसीडेड ऑल अदर पार्ट मस्ट बी मेड कंसोनेंट विथ इट तो मीटर को अगर हम छोड़ भी दे बाकी जो भी पार्ट है उसको भी एक साथ यूनिफाइड होना है दैट इज द पार्ट ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक फुलनेस we cannot praise a poem because of some striking lines this is uh, similar to the concept of purple patch remember jo uh, humne padha tha in the in horaces arts poetica so purple patch is that thing that uh, in a very mediocre poetry you are including some very uh, striking and beautiful lines quoted from some other text 
so this cannot make that mediocre poem beautiful rather it will make it more uh, uh, disgusting for the reader so coleridge bhi dekho wahi baat keh rahe ki we cannot praise the poem because of some striking lines the whole poem must be unified एक दो लाइन के लिए हम नहीं कह सकते कि दिस पोएम इज अ क्लासिक पीस ऑफ आर्ट और इट इज अ मास्टर वी कैन नॉट से नेक्स्ट हम आते हैं ये कॉन्सेप्ट तो आप सबको पता है कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फैंसी एंड इमेजिनेशन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट एंड द की कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ बायोग्राफी या लिटरेरी तो फैंसी एंड इमेजिनेशन इमेजिनेशन एंड फैंसी दोनों चीज को फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम कोलरिज ने डिस्टिंग्विश किया था इन चैप्टर थर्टीन ऑफ biography or literary so fan uh, first of all imagination you all know that imagination has two types primary and secondary so what is imagination coleridge is saying that it is a kind of penetrating force to the ultimate truth of things so imagination ke through hum kya kar sakte hain koi bhi cheez ke andar बहुत डीपली हम उसको एनालाइज कर सकते हैं एंड वी कैन गिव द अल्टीमेट ट्रूथ अल्टीमेट रियलिटी ब्यूटी ये सभी चीजें हम एक्सप्लोर कर सकते हैं थ्रू इमेजिनेशन ही रिजेक्ट्स द बिलीफ दैट माइंड इज ओनली अ पैसिव स्पेक्टेटर नो ओलरेज इज सेइंग दैट आवर माइंड इज आल्सो एन एक्टिव स्पेक्टेटर ऐसा बिल्कुल भी नहीं है कि माइंड इज द स्टोर हाउस ऑफ एवरीथिंग माइंड इज ऑलवेज एक्टिवली पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन आवर ऑब्जर्वेशन इन आवर परसेप्शन इन आवर थिंकिंग प्रोसेस ईच एंड एवरी टाइम माइंड इज फंक्शन सो दैट वी कैन गिव डिफरेंट इंटरप्रिटेशन वी कैन रीड समथिंग वी कैन मेमोराइज समथिंग दैट इज ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ आवर माइंड विच इज एक्टिवली सींग एवरीथिंग एक्टिवली ऑब्जर्विंग द सिचुएशन तो प्राइमरी एंड सेकेंडरी इमेजिनेशन प्राइमरी इमेजिनेशन मैंने बहुत बार बताया है डिफरेंट कॉन्टेक्स्ट में तो एग्जैक्ट डेफिनेशन क्या है बायोग्राफी लिटरारी में मैंने कोट किया है प्राइमरी इमेजिनेशन आई होल्ड्स टू बी द लिविंग पावर कुछ की वर्ड्स को याद रखो लिविंग पावर एंड प्राइम एजेंट ऑफ ऑल ह्यूमन परसेप्शन as a repetition in the finite mind of the eternal act of creation in the infinite i am so coleridge is saying that primary imagination is a basic thing it is a prime agent of all human perception which means it is common to each and every human being and isme kya hota hai ki jo eternal creation the creation of god we can see or repeat the creation of god inside the finite mind uh in the infinite i am so i am therefore i am the very famous statement of rene descartes you all have heard it so primary imagination ka kya duty hai primary imagination kya karte hain ki god ne jo universe create kiya the creation of that infinite or that um, supreme god इसको देखने के लिए प्राइमरी इमेजिनेशन गॉड ने हम सबके अंदर दिया है ताकि वी कैन ऑब्जर्व हिज क्रिएशन इटरनल एक्ट ऑफ क्रिएशन वी कैन ऑब्जर्व एंड वी कैन आइडेंटिफाई आवर पोजीशन इनसाइड इट इन द इनफाइनाइट आई एम कि मेरा भी एक एग्जिस्टेंस है आई एम आल्सो द क्रिएशन ऑफ गॉड आई एम आल्सो द पार्ट ऑफ दिस ग्रेट मैक्रोकॉजम और दिस ग्रेट यूनिवर्स आई एम आल्सो अ पार्ट ऑफ इट and i also have a significant role in that organic unity of creation so ye samajhne mein madad karta hai primary imagination jo ki hum sab ke andar it is the process through which we all perceive things through our senses this is the simplest form of the definition it is an involuntary and unconscious act of human mind hum sab ke andar imagination hai बट हम कभी कॉन्शियसली इमेजिन करते हैं कभी अनकॉन्शियसली करते हैं तो इट इज अंटेनियस थिंग कॉमन टू ऑल ह्यूमन बींग तो इट इम्पोजेस सम सॉर्ट ऑफ ऑर्डर ऑन दीज इम्प्रेशन रिड्यूसेस देम टू शेप एंड साइज सो दैट द माइंड कैन फॉर्म अ क्लियर इमेज ऑफ द आउटसाइड वर्ल्ड तो ये हमें देखने में मदद करता है इट इज यूनिवर्सल पोजेस्ड बाई ऑल सेकेंडरी इमेजिनेशन इज फॉर बेटर देन प्राइमरी इमेजिनेशन it makes artistic creation possible which is only possessed by artist not only poet but each and every artist 
आर्टिस्ट के पास होता है सेकेंडरी इमेजिनेशन इट रिक्वर्स एक्टिव एंड कॉन्शियस वर्किंग ऑफ द माइंड इट सिलेक्ट एंड ऑर्डर द रॉ मटीरियल एंड रिशेक्ट इट इन टू ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ ब्यूटी तो जो भी चीजें हमने देखा वो प्राइमरी इमेजिनेशन है एंड उसको सॉर्ट आउट करके जब आप कोई नए चीज आप क्रिएट कर रहे हो देन इट बिकम्स पार्ट ऑफ योर सेकेंडरी इमेजिनेशन सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस सेकेंडरी इमेजिनेशन ऑल ऑफ आस कैनॉट बिकम एन आर्टिस्ट only a selected person who have this kind of imagination can possess the quality it is a magical synthetic power and ye bahut important statement hai secondary imagination ke liye it dissolves diffuses and dissipates in order to recreate this is a very important statement ab fancy kya fancy is uh, much uh, lesser in uh, quality than imagination fancy is not creative it is a kind of memory it arbitrarily brings forth some images but they are not unified together each and every images have their own separate identity fancy is a mechanical juxtaposition not a chemical fusion theek hai to fancy matlab jaise uh, young age mein hamare bahut sare fancies hote hain we fancy uh, to we meeting with our dream actor or actress to so, ye imagination hai ye fancy hai ki exact to ye cheez hai aapko nahi pata but you are imagining different different images together and you are creating it so it is a kind of mechanical juxtaposition it is not chemical fusion it is not a proper fusion rather you are just mixing it up jumbled it up different kinds of images are jumbled uh, are jumbled in up in your memory so it is a kind of fancy ठीक है ये आपका फैंसी अच्छा नेक्स्ट आते हैं ये भी एक इम्पोर्टेंट पार्ट है बायोग्राफी लिटरेरिया में कोलरिज इज एनालाइजिंग एंड आल्सो क्रिटिसाइजिंग वर्ड्सवर्थ पोएट्री ठीक है वर्ड्सवर्थ के ऊपर एक इवेल्युएशन उन्होंने किया था तो वर्ड्सवर्थ ने बताया था कि लैंग्वेज मस्ट बी सच इट 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 शुड बी रियली यूज बाय मेन एंड प्रोज पोएट्री में कोई डिफरेंशिएशन नहीं है प्रोज पोएट्री एक ही लैंग्वेज में आप लिख सकते हो बट कोलरिज हियर डिफर्स कोलरिज इज सेइंग दैट नो पोएट्री का लैंग्वेज मस्ट डिफर फ्रॉम द लैंग्वेज ऑफ प्रोज एंड दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट ही क्रिटिसाइज्ड वर्ड्सवर्थ थ्योरीज एज हाफ चाइल्ड ऑफ माय ब्रेन ठीक है ये स्टेटमेंट याद रखना बेस्ट लैंग्वेज कैन ओनली बी लर्न फ्रॉम स्टडीइंग द वर्क्स ऑफ ग्रेट पोएट्स नॉट फ्रॉम नेचुरल what's what is saying that you can use the language of rustic people but coleridge is saying that no this this should not be agar aapko acche language seekhna hai to aapko naturally wo aana chahiye you must be a genius of using high quality language you cannot learn it by uh, reading some classical poets as for what's what's merit is concerned coleridge praises him for his purity of language kuch cheez ko unhone praise bhi kiya tha जैसे उनके प्योरिटी ऑफ लैंग्वेज ठीक है अच्छा तो कोलरिज देखो क्या करे अबाउट वर्ड्स वर्ड एंड ऑस्टियर प्योरिटी ऑफ लैंग्वेज बोथ ग्रामेटिकली एंड लॉजिकली इन शॉर्ट अ परफेक्ट अप्रोप्रिएटनेस ऑफ वर्ड्स टू मीनिंग वर्ड्स वर्ड इज एग्जैक्टली परफेक्ट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सेगमेंट sanity and soundness of thoughts and sentiments ये वो प्रेस कर रहे दीस आर द क्वालिटीज ऑफ वर्ड्स वर्ड्स पोएट्री originality of single lines and paragraphs gifted imagination and truthful description of nature ye sabhi cheeze hai wordsworth ke andar he points out that some of wordsworth's poems michael ruth brothers these poems are exceptional which violates wordsworth's own theory of poetry theek hai isme kya hai isme unhone prose language use kiya whenever it is not necessary and excessive fondness for dramatic forms purity of genres unhone maintain nahi kiya poetry ke sath unhone drama ko mix up kar diya kuch aise poems mein like michael booth and brother but otherwise wordsworth has brilliantly composed his nature poems theek hai chalo next aate hain next and last concept of today's class that is the willing suspension of disbelief very important term maine bahut baar isko quote kiya tha so willing suspension of disbelief uh, it is exactly uh, used for coleridge's supernatural work 
तो बहुत सिंपल क्वेश्चन कि टू एंजॉय सुपरनेचुरल वर्क यू नीड टू यूज दिस टेक व्हेनेवर यू आर सीइंग समथिंग सुपरनेचुरल इफ यू ऑलवेज थिंक दैट नो साइंस हैज टोल्ड मी दैट गोस्ट इज नॉट देयर इट इज प्योरली ह्यूमन इमेजिनेशन तो जो भी चीजें दिखा रहे हैं वो अननेचुरल है ये रियल लाइफ में नहीं होता है then you cannot enjoy the beauty or the thrilling part of that supernatural poem or any kind of supernatural work so for that particular moment when you are reading or seeing something supernatural you need to suppress your logic willingly and your disbelief over supernatural poem that is why willing suspension of disbelief ki aap willingly इसको सस्पेंड कर रहे हो आप इसको डिलीट नहीं कर रहे हो आप सस्पेंड कर रहे हो फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर मोमेंट जस्ट टू एंजॉय दैट हॉरिबल एटमोस्फियर ऑफ सुपर नेचुरल वर्क मोमेंटरली यू हैव टू फॉरगेट अबाउट लॉजिक एंड साइंस एंड जस्ट एंजॉय द मिस्टीरियस मोमेंट्स और होस्टली मोमेंट्स एक्सप्रेस इन द वर्क ठीक है सो दिस आर द मेजर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ बायोग्राफिया लिटरारिया तो अगर आपके पास टाइम है तो एक बार जरूर पढ़ लेना टेक्स्ट को एक्चुअली बहुत बड़ा टेक्स्ट है बट चैप्टर थर्टीन फोर्टीन एंड चैप्टर थ्री एंड फोर दीज आर इम्पोर्टेंट इसको आप जरूर एक बार देख लेना ठीक है तो दैट इज द एंड ऑफ टू डेज क्लास थैंक यू ऑल फॉर ज्वाइनिंग दिस इज द लिंक ऑफ माई टेलीग्राम चैनल द लिंक इज ऑल्सो गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स सो दोज ऑफ यू हु हैव नॉट ज्वाइन डेट प्लीज ज्वाइन टू गेट नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ ऑल इम्पोर्टेंट क्लासेस so in tomorrow's class we will analyze the question paper of this year west bengal set exam theek hai to kal se hum uske analysis ko start karenge so don't forget to join me live please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notified okay so thank you all bye bye everyone good night see you all tomorrow at 8:30 pm in the analysis